in this episode, Xbox 360 Wheel, Super League Formula, Project Gotham 3, and Top Sim Cars, sponsored by SimRaceway.com. Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm your host, Jessica Lopez, and this is... Sean Cole. And welcome, thank you for joining us. We have a lot of content on today's show, starting with the Xbox 360 wheel and pedal set, which many of viewers have asked for us to review before. This thing's old school. This actually came out before our show, but like you said, so many people requested it. We had Forza 3 come out, so time to put the 360 wheel through our weighted rating scale. Time to put it through the weighted rating scale. In addition, we're putting in something else for the Xbox 360 on the scale. Project Gotham. Yeah, and talking about old school, we got a copy of Project Gotham 3, which mm -hmm. I, I got to be honest, I expected a lot more from Microsoft and Project Gotham when it came to box art. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine it was a top seller looking like this. Um, Come on, you know you didn't buy it like that. All right, no, it's just, that shows you how old school the game is. Darren went down to get us a copy, and the only way we found it was in the very used bin, and no instructions, but... You got the game. Got the game. So we were able to play it and uh, put it through the weighted rating scale as well. And we have our top simulation cars of all time. Yeah, sponsored by uh, simraceway.com. Home, home of, of the, the one, one click, click install. install. And we also have a new sim for the PC, Super League Formula. And this is by ISI Image Space Incorporated together with CTDP, tracks, Cars Tracks Development Project. And they're actually a modding team who uh, make mods, and they made mods for R Factor, yeah. which is um, ISI makes R Factor. Yeah, and like you said, they teamed up. Well, it's also a teaming up of soccer and racing, which is kind of bizarro, but two biggest sports on earth, and they teamed up. And you've got like teams painted up in European football schemes, mm -hmm. driving sort of Formula One ish cars, which you'll tell them about later. And uh, this is all in one sim. Uh, and they even turned to sim bin to help them with the tracks. That's right. So you got a little bit of their flair in the game. And let me go ahead and give the viewers the specs. Super League Formula is a motorsport sim that combines football and open wheel racing of all things. You can climb into the cockpit of one of 12 identically prepared 750 horsepower V12 open wheel cars bearing the colors of your favorite soccer team. There are six tracks included with this title, including Magni Coors, Zolder, Donington, Estoril, Monza, and Harama. This sim is available for the PC only, all brought to you using the ISI G-Motor 2 engine. Image Space Incorporated, known as ISI, and the powers behind R-Factor contacted CTDP with the prospect of managing the content side of the Super League formula. They did the cars and organized the tracks, and ISI, together with their license holder, Media Games, handles all the marketing and release information. Alex Boro agreed to take on the project and model the car in five weeks, and another six weeks to paint 19 different liveries. In the meantime, physics were developed and based on the data that was received. Tracks became a problem as CTDP neither had the resources nor the manpower to build them from scratch. They give credit to Simbin and some freelancers for helping out there. There you have it, Super League Formula using the ISI G-Motor engine, which we didn't think we'd see around again, but no, no. there it is. Yeah, well, and John Smy, he's the one who told me about it. He kind of downplayed their involvement, but then when you fire it up, you see ISI, you go to the website, you see ISI. So apparently they are pretty involved with that, you know, that little known group is CTDP. Who also won the Hall of Fame and had the mod of the year. Yeah, not so unknown apparently, huh? Congratulations to them. They're probably very feel very accomplished. This is actually their first sim. Yeah. So it's a you know milestone for them. Yeah, it is. It's great seeing a top modding group getting their chance to do a commercial product. So I love that too. And it has six tracks, open wheeled racing, retails for $39.99, which to me, in my opinion, seems a little steep. I mean, we are in a recession here. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think it's worth it? Do you think that's a good price? Well, like you said, a little steep. You know, $39.99 is the same price as R Factor. If you bought R Factor, you could download that Hall of Fame mod, or you could download a handful of tracks. So, but you get it all in one bundle with good force feedback, and you get the liveries of the you know, European soccer team. So, for the fanatical uh, football fans, 
uh, they might appreciate that as well. Good promotional tool. You can get it at slfgames.com and the guys put the game or the sim through their weighted rating scale and what, how did you guys score it? <laughs> well, I'd give you the number, but then it would take all the fun out of watching the piece. So why don't you watch the piece and see the score? Okay. 12 categories for a total of 100 points. Starting with physics, with a maximum of 15 points, Super League Formula had 13 of 15. Graphics, eight and a quarter out of 10. Sounds, eight and a quarter out of 10. Tracks, seven out of 10. Vehicles, five out of 10. Fun factors, six and three quarters out of 10. Force feedback realism, eight and three quarters out of 10. AI, three and a half out of five. Multiplayer, three and a half out of five. Damage, four and a quarter out of five. Presentation, three out of five. Cost, one and a half out of five for a total of 72.8 out of 100. Well, since we had so much fun with that car and we had top simulation cars coming up next, we figured we'd go ahead and take that car and throw it right on the list. That car meaning? You know, that open wheel car. It's only one car, six, right? Six, it, car, six yeah. tracks, <laughs> one car. Super League Formula car. Going on to our top simulation cars of Super all League time. Super League Formula car. In addition, <laughs> The guys did a historics piece a while back, and they took a car from that historics piece. Yeah. The Ford Escort. Escort. And that was actually a request, right? It was. I'm oh, sorry, you guys. It was in our forum. We get a lot of requests. That's how we've been building the list. And this car, actually, I'm laughing so hard. You got to go watch historics. It's a funny piece. We're having fun here, and that that car is fun, so it belongs on the list. It sure does. So here you have it, top simulation cars of all time, sponsored by SimRaceway.com, home of the one click install. All right, here we are for top simulation cars of all time, number nine. Number nine. I think we're just <laughs> going to keep numbering these things. Kind of sounds kind of cool. Um, First up, we have the Ford Escort, Mark I. It's not a Capri? Not a Capri, or a Focus. I've called this car three different things. It's the Escort. Uh, this car is manufactured between 68 and 75. 68 year I was born. Dating myself here. Well, and this is one of those cars that was actually made by a Historics Mod team. It comes from Simbin and GT Legends. The 3D model does. Yeah, and they actually imported that car along with a whole bunch. We talked about Historics, but today we're talking about that Escort. And you actually need the, le the Legends disc in order to run it, but the model is done by Simbin. All the physics, the sounds have been reworked by the Historics team. They, they got input from real drivers on this. They've got real feel support. I mean, they got a whole lot crammed into this timer going? Let's get the timer going. Timer Better going. Half. A little free time for it. So anyway, it's <laughs> the, uh, this car was in the GTC 76 series right. within that whole setup. And that's basically the whole uh, GT Legends uh, Car list was, yeah, was, put it in that group of historic cars, so exactly. a lot of different cars to run with. 254 horsepower in this little beast at 8,500 8, RPMs, 172 foot-pounds of torque, little rear-wheel rear -wheel drive, Cosworth engine, and it's only under 2,000 yeah. pounds in this little car. And that's a ferocious amount of horsepower, the way this car works out with its yeah, short the, wheelbase. The horsepower to weight ratio is just <laughs> crazy. And so under braking, it's sketchy, and you will inevitably put it in the wall where you're going to get to find out that it's got Really good damage modeling as well. I mean, you yep. can under camber the wheels, put yeah, that thing down What did we give damage ground? on our scoring system here? We gave it a four and a half. You gave it a four and a half. I gave it a three and a half, um, which gave it a four overall. So uh, really good in that category. We were a little bit varied on, on our scores here. 87 we for me and an 84 for you overall. And, you know, one point variances across the board just kind of made that happen. Right, the first three categories, physics, sounds, and models, I was all a point ahead of you. But we gave it 17 overall in physics, 12 and a half in sounds, nine models. So this is an awesome car. Yeah, absolutely. The fun factor, too, and the immersiveness of this car. You get sucked into the sounds. Like you said, the sounds are fantastic. That sucks you in. The dash is great. That sucks you in. And by the end, you're talking about a car that's a 9 out of 10, I believe, in, in fun factor, which which is, you know, right there. This is one of the fun. funnest cars. That, oh, there's our time. All right. Overall score for the Escort, 85 and a half. So where did that put us on our... Uh, put it eighth on the overall list. Not so bad. It's up in the top really 10. Speaking of which, what are we? 
20th and 21st car now. I believe so. so we actually have a top 20 list. And this is a hybrid here. car, you know, R Factor GT uh, Legends. So that's kind of cool. New, yeah. A little it hyphenated is. Uh, title on the list. Me personally, a little bit of side note here. I prefer to run these cars in R Factor because R Factor is a little more polished as far as um, being able to set up your controls, real feel. Uh, it's just more configurable. So I, yeah. I like these cars. GT Legends is a little more dated. So. And it came with all those old tracks. So getting in a, uh, again, you could run this at Nurburgring. You could run this at oh, uh, Eastern Creek. Laser Scan. Horn Park, we <laughs> yeah. ran it out. Oh, yeah, that was, which was a lot fun. of fun. We've been running that one Cars lately. So. Next up, we got the Super League Formula car. Why don't you go just go to get the timer going? Timer we've, given this car, going. we've given this car plenty of time on the show. <laughs> um, 12 identically prepared, 250, 750 horsepower V12 open wheel cars. Uh, and they have the colors of your favorite soccer team. Sure. You know, European soccer teams. Yeah, so uh, you got to love that. And this is made by the CTVP guys for the Super League Formula game or sim. Yeah, we've been wanting to put these guys on the show with their yeah. 2006 mod. And we probably will eventually. I yeah. might like that one a little bit better than this. But, but this uh, is their latest greatest. So you're talking it about is. That, the Hall of Fame mod team building this car. And it's beautiful. I Great mean, to see that these guys got hired to do that. I mean, that's, it is. Hopefully they make some decent money on that. But uh, um, great physics, sounds are nicely done. Speaking of which, we physics, we gave it an overall of 17.3, which is a good score. 12.3 in sounds, 9 in models, 9 in cockpit, 7. I, I didn't have so much fun with this. Not as much fun as, say, that the Escort. I, I, I agree with you on that one. Uh, maybe it's a little bit of the Formula One takes a little more uh, time and precision, whereas yeah. for you and I, the way we drive and getting to drive against each other in that four just immediately Banging we were fenders, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. going for it. <laughs> uh, force feedback was pretty nice, eight. I'm wondering, you know, if they use like real feel right. in the sim. Yeah, and it's all it's built in, kind of, so yeah. we can't really, or at least it's new to us, so it's hard for us to really tune things the way we would like real feel. Four and a quarter for skins because it's got all those different, uh, you know, soccer teams on there. And yeah, I'm not going to make fans here, but I mean, you could drive that Liverpool. I love Liverpool and uh, that club. So timer's does up. Doesn't have time. Sean and I scored this identically for <laughs> overall, 84 and a half, which puts it 12th. Actually, tied for 12th on the list. Uh, I don't remember the other 12th place holder, but that's the exact score. We'll show you right here. <laughs> so that's going to do it for number nine. Um, who do we have up next up? I almost, I've already forgotten. Well, we have about 20 to choose from based on all the submissions we've gotten through the forum and emails and I everything. know. We were going to do one of the endurance racers. I think that was That's one right. of my next uh, cars on the list, the endurance racers Porsche. Um, and then it's something else, but it's something good for you. You guys will see it on the next show. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Top simulation cars of all time, sponsored by SimRaceway.com. Speaking of which, you can get that Historics mod right there. Not a one-click install, no. though. You need... No hacking out there. <laughs> you need GT Legends to play this, sure. which I think is really cool. You have to have the disc in the game to play the Historics mod. Yeah. GT Legends and R Factor, so purchase both of those. Don't be hackers out there. I Support always our community. I love the way uh, they did that, though. Our development teams. The proper way to do it. Yep. Anyway, we're out. Thanks for watching. Next up, Darren's going to be reviewing his low budget copy <laughs> of. Project Gotham 3, which he got in a recycle bin, as you can tell, <laughs> along yeah. with this other game here. Yeah, we got Burnout uh, Paradise as well, also from the bargain bin with a pre-owned sticker there that Darren picked up. So this one's coming at a later show, though. It is, and a couple people have requested that, so mm -hmm. there you have it. But first up, PGR 3. All right, so originally this was just going to be me doing Project Gotham 3. I was just going to do a little quickie review, give the scores, but... Uh, you know, with my bargain, $4.99 bargain bin that I've spruced up here with the disc now. And you'd think that'd be good enough, but uh, then we all let Darren know that there's already Project Gotham 4, too. Yeah, so... Back to the bargain bin. Yep. <laughs> $9.99 for Project Gotham 4. So we're in it for a total of 15 bucks, two games? Yeah. You got it like that. Yeah, so you guys are going to get your 15 bucks worth out there, hopefully. And uh, so we're going to put it through the weighted, weighted rating scale and all that, but you know what? i got to say something. <laughs> this is great. I, I didn't even consider this game originally. When I heard Project Gotham, I thought Batman and Robin. I mean, <laughs> so what the, you know, why name a game that is really sim-like? I mean, it's got yeah. real-life tracks, real cars. Yeah. But the I word, mean, I was expected to drive the Batmobile. The word Gotham might, might as well be copyrighted or... Uh protected because yeah. uh, you just don't use that word. Yeah, so I, like I said, I was 
you know, expecting to ju jump into the bat cave, drive the bat mobile or the bat bike, whatever. Now, I will say for me, my experience with Project Gotham goes a little further than that. And this goes back to the PS2 and Xbox days. And I actually was a PS2 player and had a friend of mine say, you know what? This is the game you have to play as a sim racer. Sell your PS2, get an Xbox, and get Project Gotham. And I did. It actually caused me to switch systems. This is many, many, many years ago. Um, but I hadn't played 3 or 4. And I think a big part of it, too, for us is that we really just started covering the 360. Mm -hmm. You know, we, for Forza 2, Forza 3, um, we just started covering. And speaking of Forza 2, you know, PGR 3 gives it a run, yeah. you know, to a certain extent. Uh, it's got cockpit views. Mm -hmm. But anyway, why don't we tell everybody out there a little bit more about what Pod Project Gotham 3 is all about. Project Gotham Racing 3, or PGR 3 for short, was released with the launch of the Xbox 360 and developed by Bizarre Creations. It features 80 licensed cars from over 30 manufacturers that include Ferrari and Lamborghini. Of the 80 cars in the game, 71 are unlocked and available for play at the start of a new game, while the remaining 9, prototypes, one-offs, and concept cars, are left for the player to unlock. PGR 3 allows multiplayer offline with up to two players on one Xbox console or more players via System Link. It also offers online integrated scoreboards for single player career events as well as time trials and test track times. With an Xbox Live Gold account, drivers are able to race against up to seven other competitors online. This is where the arcade mode kicks in. Kudos. Just like the aggression points in Need for Speed Shift, they play an important part in Project Gotham. Kudos points are given for stylish driving, for example, drifting around a corner, drafting, or getting two or four wheels off the ground. There's also some downloadable content for it as well. The entire Cadillac V-Series was made available in May of 2006 for free. A speed pack was made available in April 2006 with tournament access, new features, some fixes, and new cars. And then an A-Style pack was made available in July of 2006. Okay, so there's a lot to know about Project Gotham 3. Like, you know, like I mentioned just a second ago, it's you know, launched with the 360 and uh, out more than four years ago, so... A long time ago. Yeah, so it is a little dated, but... Came with tons of cars, though. Yeah, it, and it held up pretty well on the, on the weighted rating scale. And uh, why don't we tell them how it held up? All right. Starting with physics, 10 out of a possible 15. Graphics, 7.5 out of 10. Sounds, 8.5 out of 10. Tracks, 7 out of 10. Vehicles, 8 out of 10. Fun Factor, 7 and 3 quarters out of 10. And Force Feedback, 5 out of 10. Artificial Intelligence, 4 out of 5. Multiplayer, 3 out of 5. Damage, 3 quarters of a point out of 5. Presentation, 3 out of 5. Cost, 4 out of 5. For a total of 68.5 out of 100 possible. All right, so... 68 and a half overall, which doesn't sound so good, but you know what? Considering this is, you know, a f f almost five-year-old title, um, it did pretty good. And we're, we, this is a hardcore simulation scale here, too. Definitely. So, And like you said, dated, and it's going against the, you know, the current sims on our mind. And it's kind of hard to go back in time. And just like it'll be kind of hard to go into the future looking back on the sims that we're grading today, but... You know, again, their marketing could have killed them a little bit. They could have done better here. No, this is what it looks really, really looked like. Let's go to this one. Project okay, Gotham okay. 4. This is the most current now. Um, they've added a bunch of stuff to it. And motorcycles. Motorcycles for one. Yeah, exactly. And we put it through the weighted rating scale. And we're going to tell you all about it right after this quick commercial break. In October of 2007, Project Gotham 4 was released. The most prominent addition to Project Gotham 4 is advanced weather effects that both affect the visuals and physics on the track. The weather can change from sun to rain or snow to hail within a single race. A system logged on to Xbox Live will download weather data from the Weather Channel, allowing users to set in-game conditions to mirror current weather in their respective cities. 
game simulates 10 types of weather including clear days, clouds, light to stormy rain, fog, snow, and even ice. In user-created races, weather is fully customizable along with all the other race variations. PGR4 includes many of the tracks from previous versions including Tokyo, New York, the Nürburgring, London, and Las Vegas. Five new cities and tracks were also added. Shanghai, St. Petersburg, Quebec City, Macau, and the Michelin Test Track. Project Gotham 4 features more than 130 vehicles, including cars and now new to the franchise, motorcycles. This version marks a return to the car balance of PGR 2 with cars ranging from low performance hatchbacks to high performance supercars. PGR 3 emphasized supercars and special models, but did have a few high performance production cars. Okay, so now you've heard everything about Project Gotham 4. So now we're going to put it through our weighted rating scale here in a second. Um, let's talk about it first though, all right? So what do you think, dude? Um, you know, uh, overall, it was a little more on the game side than the sim side. I mean, it's a sim because it drives like a car and you got your interior view. Um, but there are just things about it that keep making you think game. Like, we were just talking about, like, the cone challenge. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, I like them. It's fun. It's great. It's like, well, okay, go through the cones or slalom or kudo through the cones. <laughs> but, yeah, but one of the sim effects things now that's really cool is like the, you know, tapping into the weather channel and being able to set up your races via the weather channel on current, yeah. you know, current, uh, the way the current weather is. So that, that's pretty cool. And it, all it the does. ten different types of effects, so. Yeah, and I have to go back to that kudo thing before I get, you know, railed by everybody out there. Bottom line is, the kudos are how you're rewarded for drifting or, or other various quality driving skills. And you get kudos, which is then converted to currency, and that's how you upgrade or buy new cars. You know what? And I'm starting to see a very familiar theme here between Project Gotham, Need for Speed Shift, Grid. You know, a lot of these, these, all these titles have the same theme, and, you know, they're all pretty similar. It is. It lives with some slight variations. And I think it's also what makes a lot of these console titles more fun than the PC Sims is that they give certain, you these yeah. elements that, that frankly are fun. They're challenges. They're things that you can kind of keep going and they, they draw you in. And it's a little bit different. It is the fun side of racing versus the, the competition side, I think. Yeah, and uh, cars, we've mentioned the cars, vast car selection. Uh, actually, motorcycles were added too to this one. Mm -hmm. uh, the tracks are really nice. So why don't we just give the... Uh, Here's our scores on Project Gotham 4. Starting with physics, 10, 15. Next up, graphics, 8.5 out of 10. Sounds, 8.5 out of 10. Tracks, 7.5 out of a possible 10. Vehicles, 8.5 out of 10. Fun factor, 8 out of 10. And force feedback, 6 out of a possible 10. Artificial intelligence, four out of a possible five. Multiplayer, three out of a possible five. Damage, again, three quarters of a point out of five. Presentation, three and three quarters out of five. And cost, four out of five. For a total of 72 and a half out of 100 points. Okay, so our overall 72 and a half are on uh, Project Gotham 4, which again, that's a two year old almost three-year-old title now. Well, two years old. And I seem to remember a few uh, recent games that have scored less than that. So that's actually a really good score when you can consider the age yep. and the score and that it's a console sim. Yeah, and you know what? If we would have scored this title two years ago... Oh, we'd have been doing backflips. Yeah, and it probably would have been closer to the 80s compared to yeah. you know some of the stuff that we've got today. So it did pretty good considering. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm starting to think that 360 is... Definitely a good racing system, man. I, yeah. I, you know, with the 360 wheel, which we review here later on the show, and the Fanatic wheel. Yeah. Um, Forza 3, Forza 2, Need for Speed Shift. <laughs> the you know, list goes on. Race Pro. Dirt 2. Dirt 2. Two. You know, there's a, a lot of uh, good racing titles on the yeah. 360 now. And good equipment, mediocre equipment, or, or beginner equipment. Solid force feedback, you know, on, on yeah. you know, really good force feedback on the Fanatic stuff, but... Uh, Definitely pick it up. PS3 better get their act together and get Gran Turismo. I, mean, I don't know what they yeah. are doing there. But. Seriously. Anyway, so there's our uh, Project Gotham 4 and 3 review. Hope you yeah. guys have enjoyed it. And you know, a couple things just going back on this. Oh, sim. scores. Yeah, yeah. Let's, before yeah. I end it, yeah, let's talk about a few things. You know, you had mentioned the damage. Uh, yes. That, that's an area that the game definitely suffered. Yeah, you scored it a half a point. I gave it a point. <laughs> Visual mainly only. No yeah. real, no physical at all. Not at all. You can't do anything. Uh, and even the, the visual is pretty weak. Um, AI. 
the AI, or some of the best, some great racing. Really good AI, um, really strong AI in this game. You were running the Tesla against the Testarossa, and I swear I was watching it, and it's not just that the, 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 the computer was trying to fight you, but when you made a pass, it's almost like he was pissed that you made a pass, yeah. and he was coming at you with aggression, not just trying to make a pass, but it was like, how dare you, and it's kind of interesting to see AI, AI that thinks that way. Yep. So hey, if you guys don't have uh, 360, you know, if you have a 360, you don't have these titles and looking for something new just to yeah. mess around with, 15 bucks, <laughs> I got them both at uh, GameStop. I don't know if we should mention their name. But well worth the money at that price. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely worth the money. So hope you guys enjoyed our review, the, our quick reviews here. And a little retro for you guys. We're probably going to be doing more of this. We've got Burnout Paradise coming, Formula yeah. One Championship yeah. Edition for the uh, PS3. Just undercover? Are we going to do Undercover? Undercover. Uh, the one, what are we unlimited. Doing? Unlimited, Unlimited. The, sorry. This guy, man. <laughs> Test Drive Unlimited <laughs> for so the amazing. PC, which is, I got it for my daughter, who's uh, going to be 16 here pretty soon, and, and she's just learning how to drive. And some guys on our forum, speaking of which, go to our forum, you can check out some of our talk about this. Uh, used it to learn how to drive, teach people how to drive a stick. So, yeah. got it for my daughter, and it's pretty cool. You could, it's wide open driving. Yeah, anyway, we'll talk about that more later. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed our Project Gotham 4 review and 3. We'll see you later. Next up, a wheel that a lot of people have been asking for for the Xbox 360 by Microsoft, the wireless racing wheel. And it's actually the same as the control pad. It has all the same buttons. It, uh, it is wireless. It just has two cords, one that connects to the pedals and one for the power. The Microsoft wireless racing wheel is also compatible with the PC for those of you who are interested in doing cross-platform racing out there. You do need a wireless receiver, which is not included in this package. But this package with the wheel and the pedals is available for around 100 bucks. Available at most retail outlets, and it's been available since November of 2006. The guys put the wheel on their weighted rating scale and played it with uh, Project Gotham and some other games amongst that. So let's go ahead and roll that piece for you. All right, here we are for our... Microsoft Wireless 360 Force Feed... Man, what a tongue twister. <laughs> it is. It's a lot of words. Force Feedback <laughs> Wheel Review. I'm Darren Ganji. And I'm Sean Cole. And this wheel is here based on how many emails and form requests we get. Tons. And, yeah. And Jessica mentioned this wheel came out a long time ago, but, you know, with the, the current Xbox uh, games, people really want to see how it does on our show. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So we decided to put it through our new weighted rating scale that we had to add a new category to. Took a couple right. off from that right. one we just did for our wheel shootout. So we added pedals to this one now and took off extras and looks. Figured we'd just kind of mix those in and, with the yeah, wheel and I some mean, of the other included, ones. Yeah, I mean, they're included like wheel and rim. I mean, let's face it, that's where we're really talking about the looks. Yep, at least pedals. for me. Exactly. So, and we included the pedals like we mentioned. Yeah, and actually, uh, as Jessica mentioned, this is also uh, compatible with the PC with an extra $40 adapter, right. which That's we right. don't have. So all testing was done on the uh, 360. Mm -hmm. We fought to three, Project Gotham 4, yep. which we reviewed in this show. And three. And three, <laughs> yeah. Great games to test with. Sure. So um, why don't we tell them how, we, uh, how the scores work this the time? The new scores. So this is, again, based on 100 points. You got force feedback being, you know, one of the top rated at 15. Wheel and rim, the actual wheel carrying that over at also 15, and then pedals being a very important category in the overall score here at 15 points. And then we got buttons, mounting, compatibility, and paddles, all with 10 points each. That's right. And then we have cost, construction, plug and play, each at five points, totaling 100. There you go. So uh, why don't we just get right into it, man? Yeah. Force feedback, 15 points. Yeah. What'd you score it? I, you know what? I scored it a 10 out of 15. I gave it an 11. It, you know, it did better on rumble strips. This also has a little bit of vibration action. It seems to, really, the vibration is kind of more powerful than the force feedback in a weird way. Yeah, it is. Yeah, not really, not really strong force feedback like the Fnatic or any of the five from the, the wheel review. Definitely not as strong as any of those. So I gave it an 11. 10 and a half was our overall. Sure. Next up, wheel rim. So that goes for, you know, the looks of the wheel, the size, the shape, grip, all of that. 15 possible, 10 and a half again. 10 11 and a half. for me. And you know what, just, Sean. just taking a look at this wheel, there's nothing about it that really says race car to me. Yeah, it's kind of like, 
spaceship. It, Stormtrooper, that's my nickname yeah, Sean, for it. Sean's been calling it Stormtrooper. <laughs> it is a little spacey, but it, it does the job, you sure. know? It's got a decent rubber grip. I mean, this is all plastic. You know, yeah. it's, it's got a chrome look, but it's all. This is definitely all plastic. None <laughs> of it's metal. Um, but I mean, it's not bad. Not uh, the best looking wheel. Anymore. No, and the button placement's good. <laughs> so ten and a half overall. Next up, pedals. What is this? Like a smiling face? I. You know what I did with mine? I filled this with a towel, and it made a heel cushion. I don't think that's the intended purpose, but it. I don't either. How I used mine. Definitely the oddest. I think it's supposed to actually let your heels keep the pedals from moving. That didn't work for me. I have small feet. That didn't work for me. You... And I have big feet, and that didn't really work for me either. So kind of an odd, but you know what? They do get the job done. I mean, they, they th do. there's no real progression in the brake at all. It's just basically, you know, DFGT we mentioned. They are almost just identical. like it, except they're white. Yep, Stormtrooper <laughs> white with the hole in them. Anyway, Smiley face hole. So that gives it a nine and a half out of 15. Yeah, I gave him a nine. Sean gave him a, Sean, you were generous with that 10. Well, again, it was the comparison to the DFP uh, or the DFGT. Yeah. And the pedals are actually very similar in feel. All right, next up, buttons. 10 possible. Um, nicely set buttons. I mean, kind of plasticky, kind of cheesy, but yeah. typical, I mean, the, the Xbox configuration, sure. Xbox 360 configuration. Got a, kind of the jeweled look, and I mean, they're kind of cool. And like you said, or, you know, the, the directional pad over here. Standard color codes for the Xbox 360. It's got the, right in the horn, it's got the, um, the Xbox button that allows you to go into the dashboard and all that, you know, within uh, your Xbox 360. And then you got a start and back button here. Uh, paddles, which are part of the paddles, we'll score those separately. That's about it. And then they got the yeah. bind button down here. Sure. That's about it for buttons, though. Yeah, it really is it. And I got to tell you, something is a little aggravating for me on the buttons. I only scored it a seven. And the reason for it is I always use look left and look right as a minimum amount of buttons. And I look at needing to use a directional pad and a button to do what I like to do, which is one on my one left, one on my yeah. right. And so that, for me, is what really, I mean, just even if they could have given me a button and a direction pad on this side, that would have been a big help. Um, so that's what really killed me there. Yep. And I, I, I scored it an eight. Seven and a half overall is what we gave it. I gave it an eight, um, you know, because it was just like the Xbox, and I thought they were pretty cool. So, I mean, uh, they did the job. So seven and a half out of ten is what we gave it. Next up, mounting. Um, the only way to really mount, actually, there are hard mount points on this thing, a few. <laughs> But um, you can actually see what we have here is the accelerator wheel stand. It has an Xbox mount, and it actually handles the wheel pretty well, uh, which is nice because this is not a wheel that is easy to mount. So actually seeing it mounted well is great. Here's the mount. This, this is how the mount works. I mean, this thing's also very large. Did you mention the mount? I don't know. I was so focused. I was just talking about on. how we have this one hard mounted and didn't account for this mount here. Yeah, th it's got the lap wings, so you can do it on your lap if you want, which I wouldn't recommend. I guess having the light force feedback, it's, it's, it's okay with that. It can that. be done, but I, I, we reviewed another wheel with a lap belt. I, that's just not the way to race. You're gonna buy a wheel, which means you're taking your driving seriously, and doing it on your lap is not doing it seriously. In my you know, there opinion. are not hard mount points. I thought there were. There are not hard mount points on this. So the only way you can really mount it is, is with this. Um, this is hard mounted with this special, with the uh, extreme wheel stand, or accelerator wheel stand, excuse me. It's mounted with its um, spe uh, special clamp. So anyway, mounting. Got a seven and a quarter out of 10 overall. Yeah, I gave it a seven and a half. Sean gave it a seven. It, that, that clamp is just so-so. I mean, it does the job and it's got some different, different functionality. You know, I'd say it's about equal to a Fanatic clamp. Yeah, I, I'd say so. And with no hard mount spots. Actually, I think seven and a quarter was a little generous for this, but I don't think overall it's going to hurt it. <laughs> anyway, uh, next up, compatibility. We mentioned at the top of the show, Xbox 360 and PC compatible. I'm not even sure force feedback compatible. I, I read uh, that there was going to be force feedback compatibility on the PC. I'm not sure if they've implemented that yet with a driver. Well, with that expensive a, a <laughs> converter or adapter, that hardly even makes very realistic. But, but again, that's not helping it. It's compatibility uh, score. Yeah, and something else we had mentioned was the, uh, we had to mention was the, it's only got 270 degrees of rotation. So that's something that you're going to suffer, especially if you're doing some serious PC racing. Um, six is what we gave it overall. Both of us gave it a six. Uh, paddles, paddle <laughs> shifters. Uh, do the job. Yeah. Really cheesy, though, man. These things are the <laughs> cheapest plastic you can buy. They are. It's like they're in the right spot. They're the right shape. 
but then there's like no feeling, no positive click, no, nothing. And But they do the job. They do. I, and honestly, I don't know. Maybe they are progressive, but I, I don't know. <laughs> Paddles, we gave it a seven, though. I mean, yeah. people, it may sound like we don't like this wheel, but it does do the job, especially for under 100 bucks. Well, it's by far the least expensive wheel we've, we've uh, tested. Yep. Or right in the ballpark. Yeah. yeah. I think a DFGT is probably about the same. So, right. um, next up, cost. We were just talking about, actually. Uh, we gave it a three and a half. I gave it a four. Sean gave it a three. You know, for right around 75 bucks, what I'm guessing you can get it for is it's pretty cheap. This is a case of you get what you pay for. Now, if you're out there and you're playing your Xbox and you're using your controller and you're trying to play a great game like Forza 3, you know what? Getting this wheel and getting away from that controller, do it. Do it tomorrow. Go get this wheel. Get away from the controller. Learn what it's like to race for real. And then I tell you, you're going to want a better wheel eventually. But this will at least get you going. Yep. Uh, and it will have you racing competitively in that way. Yep. So three and a half for cost. Construction. I've heard some... Uh, we have not tested these wheels for long enough. Actually, some of these wheels came from E3, from the, the, the Microsoft booth. We just ended up Having to get <laughs> we acquired them. them. Yeah. <laughs> so, but they're still working, and they were at that booth. So, um, but we've heard some stuff about some people having theirs break. But I think they've sold a lot of these wheels. So they have, and again, it is a less expensive wheel. And going back historically, over all wheels, you know, less expensive wheels are, are made to to have a limited lifespan compared to your high end wheels. Yeah, and something else with the construction is just the shape of this body uh, is just ridiculously big. Um, the biggest of all the wheels that we have, way too wide in my opinion. Know, maybe they were doing that for the lap thing. And again, it just kind of because of that size, because of the plasticness, it just everything about it, nothing really feels too solid. So two out of five is what we gave it there. Okay. Last category, plug and play. Plugged. I, we haven't tried it on the on the PC, but on the Xbox 360, man, you just bind it and the thing's working. Just like any other controller. Press that yeah. button on the Xbox, press it on here, and bam, it's your next controller in line. Too easy. Fours we both gave it out of five. So overall score, I gave it, I was a little more generous than Sean. I gave it a 69.5, and, and Sean gave it a 66, yep. with a total of 67.8. Yeah. So that may not sound very good, and that's a high D. Low C, I guess you could say, and I guess that that's about right if you were to grade it like a school grade. Um, I don't know. What do you think, man? Well, I mean, the bottom line is when you're talking about playing on the Xbox, there's not a lot of wheels available. Uh, so really, unless you're going to get into a lot of money, this is the wheel to go to. Yep. I would absolutely, despite that score, give it a huge thumbs up on the level of whether it's a good buy or not. Yes, it is. It, you know, again, getting away from controllers and playing Forza 3 or or Project Gotham even, with the wheel is the way to go. So so I, it's a must-have, really. Yeah, and a must-have, too. One of these stands, you know, this is the accelerator wheel stand. I'd like to thank them for supplying these, two, you know, for our review. Um, we were actually laughing at these things when we first saw them. We saw them at E3, and we're like, man, what a... Well, it seems so gonna... rickety. But, man, it, it's a cool. It's a great couch rig. Yeah, it is. Uh, we'll, we're going to have a review of this rig uh, in a future show, but we'll use those on this for this review, and they did a great job. And, honestly, I don't know what we would have done mount-wise, so it really saved us in this case, because with the 360 wheel, it's absolutely Fanatic best. actually has one, too. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that one later. But, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, there is a few. But, yeah, there's not many options. When it, it wouldn't have mounted to this. No. Uh, didn't want to have a big old table in front of us, which we could have done. But So... That's going to do it. All right. Microsoft 360, wireless, force feedback, racing wheel. The Stormtrooper model. Yep. There you guys have it. Long-awaited review. What did we give it? 67.8 was our yeah. final. Yeah, 67.8. Hope you enjoyed the review. We'll see you guys next time. That's going to wrap it up for today's content-rich show. We had four right. different topics today. And we kept it moving right along. And that's going to pretty much wrap up today's show. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not yet. Comment and rate the show. We'd love to hear your feedback. Visit our forum. Yeah. We have a whole sim community going on over there. You can talk with the guys. I have Be my part own of the J -Zone. section called the J Zone. And I'd love to hear more feedback and you know get to know some of the, some of the viewers out there. So just Definitely. give us a visit at our website, InsideSimRacing.tv. And I guess that's going to pretty much do it for today. It should. I'm your host Jessica Lopez. Sean Cole. For Darren Gadji. Checkered flag is out and so are we.
Adam Sessler, y'all. He's really condescending. Yeah, you know, when the guys did that game, uh, you know, they weren't thinking about this or that and the other thing. Uh, That's going on YouTube. He's not quite that annoying.